Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 39. In this video, we're going to learn about decimal fractions. All right, so our lesson objectives for today would be to learn how to change a decimal fraction into a decimal. And then also, we want to learn how to change a decimal into a decimal fraction. So basically, we're going to go back and forth between a decimal and a decimal fraction. So before we get started, I want you to think about the very first lesson where we started talking about fractions. What I told you there is that although some of you didn't have any experience with fractions in your math class, you had seen fractions in your everyday life. Every time you and a group of friends get together and you split something up, so you know if you got together and you split up a pizza or you split up a cookie or you split up an apple or whatever it was, you gained some experience with fractions even though you didn't know it. It's going to be the same thing for decimals, right? So although you might not have seen decimals yet in your math class, you have worked with them in everyday life. One example is that you are absolutely bombarded with decimals every time you go shopping for anything. So let's kind of get started with our lesson with a basic definition. So when we start talking about decimals, kind of the introduction to that would be the decimal fraction. So a decimal fraction is a fraction whose denominator is a power of 10. Let me reread that. A decimal fraction is a fraction whose denominator is a power of 10. So what do we mean by that? The denominator is a power of 10. It means you can take the denominator and rewrite it as 10 raised to a whole number that is one or larger. So here are some examples of some decimal fractions. So we have 5 tenths here, and you can see that this 10, I could rewrite that as 10 to the power of 1. Here I have 3 hundredths. I can rewrite 100 as 10 to the power of 2. Here we have 700 thousandths, and I can rewrite this 100,000 in the denominator as 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's five zeros here, so 10 to the fifth power. So in each case, we have a decimal fraction because the denominator is a power of 10. And again, more specifically, that means that 10 is raised to some whole number that is one or larger. So to kind of get our feet wet with decimals, let's kind of run through a typical scenario. So let's suppose you go to the grocery store and encounter a can of tuna priced per can at $1.38. So this is typically how you're going to see decimals. Now, let me just skip the dollar sign real quick and just write 1.38. Now, the first thing I want to draw your attention to, you might not know that this is called a decimal point. This is a decimal point. Now, what's to the left of the decimal point? This one, this is just a whole number. This is what we've been working with forever. So I'm just going to put that this is a whole amount. A whole amount. You know, and in terms of money, I just have a dollar there. Now, this part that occurs after, after the decimal point or to the right of the decimal point is part of a whole. It's part of a whole. Again, we've already seen this with fractions. And if I was to think about $1.38 kind of using fractions, well, okay, $1 is kind of a whole amount. It's a $1 bill. Just think about 38 cents for a minute and how you could relate that in fractional terms. Well, if I had everything in pennies, let's say, it takes 100 pennies to make a dollar or one whole amount. So if I only have 38 pennies out of the 100 pennies that are needed, really what I have is I have 38 out of 100 or 38 parts out of the 100 needed to make a whole amount. Remember, when we work with fractions, our denominator is the whole amount split up into equal parts. So this is me taking a dollar and just splitting it up into equal parts of 100. That's what would happen if I got a dollar in pennies. And then if I only have 38 of those pennies, well, then I have 38 parts out of 100, right? So this 0.38 is the same thing as 38 over 100. So really, we can kind of see already that we can go back and forth and write 1.38 as 1 and 38 hundredths, right? These would actually be the same. Here you have a whole amount, and then you have part of a whole. Here with your mixed number, you have the same thing. You have a whole amount, whole amount, or your whole number part, 
And then you have your fractional amount, your part of a whole. You have 38 parts out of 100. So kind of the first thing we're going to learn is how to change to a decimal. So if you're starting out with the decimal fraction, the first thing you're going to do is count the number of zeros in the denominator, and then you're going to delete the denominator. So if I had something like, let's say, 56 over 100, I would count one, two zeros. So two zeros. And once I have that information, I can just delete the denominator. Right? I'm just going to have the number 56 now. And I'm going to have 56, and I'm going to know that I have two zeros for that denominator. Then the next thing in the numerator, which is the number 56 that we have, move the decimal point to the left by the number of zeros we counted in the denominator. So again, we had two zeros. But some of you at this point might be saying, how do I move the decimal point to the left? I don't know where it is. If you have a whole amount, you can always write a decimal point after the rightmost digit. So I can write 56 as 56 and then a decimal point. And another thing I'm going to teach you is that after this decimal point, you can put as many zeros as you want. You might see some prices in stores look like this. $56, you might see a decimal point with two zeros at the end. Or you might see $38 like this. Or $27 like this. After that decimal point, you can put as many zeros as you want, and you're not changing the value of the number. This is still 56, or in this case, since I have a dollar sign, it's still $56. So with that being said, we're going to move our decimal point to the left by the number of zeros we counted in the denominator. We counted two zeros, so I'm going to the left one, two places. So we would end up with point, point 0.56. Now another practice that you might get into when you start working with decimals is if you have a decimal point and you don't have a whole number amount, you'll probably put a zero out in front. This zero does not change the value of the number. It's just kind of used for clarity, right? So that people, when they're eyeballing it, will say, okay, oh, I have a, I have a zero first. Well, that's a little weird. So that draws their attention to the fact that there's a decimal point so that they don't miss it, right? You don't want to mistake 0.56 or 56. All right, let's look at the first one here. So we have 40 over 100. So again, the first thing I'm going to do is count the number of zeros in the denominator. Again, I have a situation where I have two, so I have two zeros. And then I'm going to delete the denominator. So I don't actually have to do that. I'm just going to write over here. I'm just going to write the numerator without the denominator. So I'm just going to write 40. Then the next step is to move the decimal point by the number of zeros that we counted in the denominator. Again, we counted two zeros. So again, I can put my decimal point here after the final digit of 40. And I'm going to move it one two places to the left, and that's going to give me 0 0.40. Now, I want to draw your attention to something. If I have a 0 right here, it's the same thing as if I erased it and had 0 0.4. Again, after you have a decimal point, once you have your final non-zero digit, you can add as many zeros as you want. So 0.4 is the same as 0 0.4000000. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Where people get confused is, Let's say you have a bunch of zeros, but then you have a non-zero digit involved. Let's say you have a nine at the end. This is different than 0.4. Those are not the same. If I have all zeros, then it's the same. But if I have something that's not zero that kind of is at the end or even in between, let's say I had a nine here and then a bunch of zeros, that, that's still not 0.4, right? You can't have it interrupted in any way. It has to be zero all the way down. So having said that, we can rewrite this answer as just 0.4. All right, let's take a look at another one. And I'm going to kind of shorten this up a little bit. And one of the things I want you to realize here, and you're going to use this later on in math, when you divide by 10 or some power of 10, and when I say a power of 10, I mean 10 raised to a whole number that's one or larger, you move your decimal point one place to the left for every zero in that power of 10. So just forget about your procedure for a second and just say, okay, I have 7 divided by 10. So I'm going to write 7 and I'm going to write my decimal point. I have one zero in this power of 10, so that means I'm moving my decimal point one place to the left and I'll end up with 0.7 as my answer. Again, you can still use that procedure. That's kind of a procedure you're going to get in a book. Count the number of zeros you have in the denominator. You have one zero. Delete the denominator. So I would have just wrote this as 7. 
and then move the decimal point one place to the left for every zero that you count in the denominator. So it goes over here. And again, you end up with 0.7. All right, let's look at 85 over 10,000. So again, I'm going to use that kind of shortcut because when we find a shortcut in math, we kind of want to use it. So I'm just going to write 85, and then I'm dividing by 10,000. So this is a power of 10 with one, two, three, four zeros. So basically, all I need to do is move my decimal point four places to the left. So I put a decimal point after the final digit in 85, and I go one, two, and then I see that, what do I do here? I don't have any more places. When that happens, I can put zeros in. So I can put a zero in here and here, and then three and then four, and I'm able to complete that. So now I'm gonna end up with point zero zero eight five as my answer. What about five and 35 over 1,000? Well, what happens is if you have a mixed number and you're doing this, just take the whole number part and go ahead and just write that. Then we'll follow that with 35 over 1000 expressed as a decimal. So to do that, I have 35 and basically I'm dividing it by a thousand. So I have one, two, three zeros in this power of 10, right? 1000 is basically 10 to the third power. So all I need to do is move the decimal point one, two, put a zero in three places to the left. I'd have 0 0.035. So if I have five and 35 thousandths, then basically I have 5.035. The decimal point with 035 after it is 35 thousandths. And then the five is just the same. Okay, so now we're gonna go backwards, right? We're just gonna reverse what we just did. So we're gonna be going from a decimal to a decimal fraction. Now, one of the things I want to tell you right away, we're not going to be simplifying here. And the reason is if you want to report something as a decimal fraction, again, the denominator has to be specific. It has to be a power of 10, right? Meaning that it's able to be expressed as 10 raised to a whole number that is one or larger. So the first thing we're going to do is write any whole number if you have one. Then you're just going to count the number of decimal places. And basically when we say count the number of decimal places, we're saying that we're counting the number of digits that occur after the decimal point. And these are only digits that are gonna add value to the number. So for example, if I have the number 0 0.38700, I don't have five decimal places here. Some people would say, okay, I have five decimal places. I don't, I only have three. These two don't add any value to the number. This is the same thing as 0.387. So I would count three decimal places here. So once you know that, you take that decimal part. So that's the part that occurs after a decimal point, and you put it over a denominator that begins with a one and is followed by the same number of zeros as decimal places. So for 0.387, basically you write 387 in your numerator, you write a one in the denominator, and you follow it by three zeros. Right, that's because we had three decimal places here. If I had, let's say, made the mistake of including these two zeros here, I would end up putting five zeros down here and I would get an incorrect answer. This is wrong, right? Because these zeros didn't add any value, so I don't have a denominator of 100,000. I would take these away and then just say, okay, I have three decimal places, so I'm gonna have one, two, three zeros. This is 387 over 1,000. All right, so we're going to start out with 0 0.05. And again, this zero out here to the left of the decimal, that's just for clarity, right? We don't need to do anything with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to count the number of decimal places that I have. So after the decimal point, I'm looking to see what I have. I have a zero and then a five. So I have two decimal places, two decimal places. And remember, this zero matters because it's followed by a five. If I have 3.00, .00, these zeros do not add any value. But the second I follow that zero with a non-zero digit, let's say 3.03, .03, this zero does matter now. So because I have, again, a five that follows the zero, this zero does matter. So we have two decimal places. Now, the next thing we wanna do is write our decimal part. 
So that's the part that occurs after the decimal. In this case, that's a zero five. And the numerator of the fraction, and we're gonna put the denominator of the fraction as a one, followed by a zero for every decimal place we have. So we had two decimal places, so you get two zeros. Now a couple things here. I don't need to have this zero in front of the five because that adds no value to the number. When you're working with whole numbers, I can always put zeros to the left. So I can put as many zeros to the left. This is still five. Kind of similar to when I'm working with decimals, I put a decimal point, I can put as many zeros here, it's still five. What I can't do if I have a whole number, I can't just start adding zeros in. This number is now 5,000, it's not five anymore. So the last thing I'm gonna draw your attention to is, a lot of you will say, okay, well you can simplify this fraction, it's one over 20. Well, yeah, we can, but it's no longer gonna be a decimal fraction, right? It's just a regular fraction at that point. And a decimal fraction has a definition where the denominator, again, is a power of 10. So we're gonna leave it as five over 100, and that's exactly what you're gonna do if your teacher says that she wants a decimal fraction, right? Do not simplify it. All right, for the next one, we have 21.34. And again, if we have a whole number part like we have here, we're gonna write that first. Now, for the fraction part, I'm gonna kinda make this simple. Take the part that occurs after your decimal point, just write it as the numerator. So 34 goes in the numerator. Put your fraction bar, then put a one, and then you can kinda just mentally look at this and say, okay, I have one, two decimal places, so I know I have two zeros. So we get 21 and 34 hundredths as our answer. And it's really, really that simple. You can go through the procedure each time, but after you work five or six problems, you can kind of just do a lot of this stuff mentally. What about 0 0.3975? Well, I'm just gonna take the decimal part, again, the part that occurs after the decimal point, write that in my numerator, so 3975 or 3,975. For my denominator, I'm gonna put a one, and I'm gonna follow that up with a zero for every decimal place I have. Well, for decimal places, I have one, two, three, four. So this is gonna get one, two, three, four zeros, or 10,000 for the denominator. So we get 3,975 over 10,000. Okay, for the last one, we have 4.279. And again, I'm just gonna write this whole number here to start. For the fraction part, just take this, your part that occurs after the decimal point, put that in the numerator. I got my fraction bar. I'm gonna put a one in the denominator. And again, I'm gonna follow that up with a zero for every decimal place that I have. So I have one, two, three of those guys. So I'm gonna put one, two, three zeros here. And I end up with four and 279 over 1,000. Or I could say four and 279 thousandths.